we saw there is another type of instance uh, another type of EPS volume or block storage that Amazon offers called as instance store one of the main differences between instance store and EPS volumes is it doesn't have any persistence at all uh, the reason why they say that is let us say there is a server A and there is an instance store data or instance store volume is attached to that uh, server and the server goes offline for some reason let us say there is a hardware failure and the server is terminated and every data that was associated with that instance store or you created is gone you cannot retrieve the data uh, so there is a red line that you can see here automatically deletes data when the EC2 instance stops or fails or is terminated by the customer itself so with such a deficiency why would somebody want to use an instance store the reason for that is instance store gives unmatched or unparalleled read IOPS and write IOPS for a disk for all this because it is not persistent Amazon has optimized it for a certain extent and if your application reads some burstable IOPS then you can go ahead and configure your instance store with the knowledge that you lose the data if something goes wrong so if you have that kind of workload say big data workloads usually in big data what happens is that actual data is stored in some database or long-term archival storage but the data that you want to process is copied and then put onto another disk and some processing happens so if this other disk where the data processing happens fails also you have your source data in a long-term storage so in those cases instance store makes a very good use case for getting the high amount of IOPS and for read as well as write and instance store is not supported for all disk all servers there are certain servers only you can start with and uh, there are other limitations say for example where you can store it where, and you cannot have snapshots for instance store like you create a volume you can uh, take a snapshot and use it in other place no you cannot do any of that so there are some other deficiencies also let us go ahead and see the comparison of instance store and elastic block store so this is local to the instance that is instance store you cannot uh, detach it and attach it to another server once the moment uh, the server is turned off or detach it all the data is gone there is no snapshot and only SSD and HDD types are supported. There are no tape drives here. There are no cold storage here. There are no multiple performance optimization techniques. Nothing here. Whatever Amazon provides, you go ahead and take it and use it. And apart from that, nothing else you can do. But when you come to Elastic Block Store, uh, you have this option of uh, detaching it, attaching to another server, moving between availability zones because they are automatically replicated. The failure rate is also less and you can create point in time snapshots and you can also have uh, multiple disk types also and there are certain uh, types of uh, EBS volumes which will allow you for recovering your server say your root volume is on EBS and your instance is supporting auto recovery there are certain instances who uh, support auto recovery and if you enable auto recovery option in your uh, instance configurations whenever the hardware fails for some reason since the data is persistent, you can copy over the data automatically to another hardware and then you can start your server without any problems. So that is what an auto recovery means and that is possible only with EBS volumes. So there is another quick comparison of data between EBS volumes and S3. When do I use EBS volumes and when do I use S3 storage? There's a quick comparison here. So if you are looking for a block storage file system, go for EBS blindly. That is if you want to read write at individual block level. But if you are looking for an object store like storing a lot of movies, a lot of images, music files, uh, snapshots, those kind of things, then S3 is your uh, best choice storage. And if you are concerned about performance, don't even think about it. Blindly recommend EBS because S3 cannot have high IOPS. There is certain amount of IOPS performance S3 gives, but there is no performance optimization techniques or tuning that is available to you to improve your S3 performance. We saw about the multi-part get, multi-part put, transfer acceleration, but that performance is nowhere comparable to what EBS can offer to you. And if you're talking about the redundancy, say you want to access in multiple servers in an availability zone, yes, EBS helps, but hands down S3 is your uh, choice here if you are worried about redundancy you have multiple facilities that because every object has an URL and you can access it in all the regions that Amazon offers and security there is not much difference both of them have encryption available 
so that cannot be a deciding factor but you can unencrypt your data decrypt it all those things are possible in both those cases so not much difference there and accessible from internet one is yes another one is no the reason is amazon you can go s3 you can go ahead and configure your bucket for public policies uh, so all the objects that are in your bucket can be configured as a static website or you just enable uh, permissions for everyone to read data from your s3 bucket but from ebs you cannot do that you need a server and that server needs to run some uh, web servers like http or ftp server or iis then only you can share your data with the internet typical use case uh, very analogous I would say but not exactly accurate EBS is defined as a disk drive and Amazon S3 is defined as an online long-term storage so that is how people see the comparative uh, use cases of uh, both these type of storage